preservation and innovation of a classic craft, we feature trailblazing die craftsman Yuichi Hirose. Hi, welcome to Tokyo Fashion Express. I'm Marie. This is Myoshoji River in Tokyo, which flows from west to east. I'm in Ochiai, an area known as the Town of Dying. This town has played an important part in supporting Japan's traditional kimono culture. About 50 years ago, at its peak, the town was home to over 300 dyeing shops and studios. Today, we meet an artisan who specializes in Edo Komon, a famous kimono fabric design with a 400-year history. The young craftsman is now sharing his work with the wider world. Let's join him on his journey. For centuries, the makers of Ochiai have been instrumental in supporting Japan's kimono culture. Yuichi Hirose, fourth generation craftsman at this hundred year dyeing factory, is one of those people. I feel the energy of the artisans who stood by the craft for centuries before me. And my hope is to keep that legacy alive. Edo Komon originated 400 years ago during the Edo period as a method of dyeing samurai uniforms. This kimono appears to be plain, but a close look reveals the finest of patterns. During a time when bold pattern kimonos were banned by the shogunate, patterns decreased in size becoming less visible to the naked eye. The Edo Komon designs made their way into the lives of town residents, leading to a wide range of patterns that were stylish yet distinctly subtle. Flashy clothes were banned, but people still wanted to express their identities, which resulted in these patterns becoming smaller and smaller. In an unrestricted world like ours today, it's actually difficult to come up with designs that are so intricate. And I believe that's where the true potential of Komon lies. Essential to Edo Komon dyeing is the katagami, or stencil, made of washi paper. Elaborate patterns have been skillfully carved by experts of the craft. The katagami is soaked in water overnight for use the following day. This helps to stretch and soften the paper, making it receptive to glue. The glue used is made of glutinous rice. The katagami is placed carefully over the fabric and the glue is smoothed out with a spatula to avoid unevenness. This requires a masterful touch, as the patterns are delicate. <laughs> this glue masks the fabric, keeping color from seeping through when dye is later applied. Traditional kimono fabric is 13 meters long. To dye the length evenly, the katagami is shifted and pasted with great measure all the way down the line. Each sheet comes with small marks called hoshi, signifying where to place the stencil for flawless continuity. This precision takes years to master and is the work of true craftsmen.
For the first three years, you're learning how to connect the hoshi with accuracy. From a diagonal point of view, you can't see the dots clearly, which disorients the stencil. So you have to look at it from the top. If you go too slow, the katagami dries up. So it has to be fast, but exact. Next, a blend of dye and glue is applied over the newly patterned fabric. It is then steamed in high heat. Finally, the glue is rinsed with water and the fabric is hung out to dry. In time, the brilliant patterns of Edo Komon begin to emerge. Today, I'm visiting Hirose-san studio to learn about Edo Komon. First, I'm shown the completed fabric. Wow, this is amazing! This pattern is called Ajiro, a famous arrangement from the Edo period. It's beautiful! Is it from winter? Yes, uh-huh. This is also an ancient style passed on from that period. It doesn't feel ancient at all. It doesn't have the look of an old traditional craft. It just looks beautiful and modern. I'm amazed at how detailed and delicate this is. It's just stunning. Next, Hirose-san guided me to a room where they store the important katagami. He says there are over 10,000 sheets stored here, including some from when Tokyo was called Edo. <gasps> this is very thin paper that I get... I'm so scared of touching this that I won't crash. But washi is very sturdy. This snow pattern is called yukiwa. It's a traditional Japanese pattern. And this is what we use to dye the fabric. It is so much finer than I thought. Hirose-san has kindly allowed me the chance to give the process a go. First, I practice smoothing out the glue on the board. Slide it at an angle that allows the glue to last all the way to the end. You don't want to run out of glue, so try to use the right amount of force to even it out. This is hard! That's nice! That's the hardest. Hirose-san makes it look simple, but it's actually much easier said than done. Wow, it's done! How beautiful! This side is nice. And here, it's a little uneven. And this too. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Just a little. You can't do the next step. Here is the final dyed product. This experience taught me just how much skill it takes. Hirose-san has inherited the rich 400-year history of Edo Komon technique, but he's also taking on a new challenge. Keep watching, it's about to get interesting. When time allows, Hirose comes out to the ocean. He began windsurfing when he was 10 and once surfed competitively.
He was good enough to be considered for the Olympics when he was in college. But upon graduating, he was faced with the choice to continue competing or join the family business. When I realized I would have to give up windsurfing, I went through a kind of emotional upheaval. I felt like my dreams were dashed. Hirose was young and wished to continue competing, but it was the words of his father that put him on his current path. I was a senior in college when he said to me, this is your last competition, so give it your best. And I realized, wow, this is the end. I can no longer compete. I thought 30 was young enough to start learning the craft of dying, but it turns out 22 was the time limit. I believe it is my job to preserve this tradition and to pass the craft on to the next generation. My son. Hirose took on his father's wishes and began a journey down the path of a craftsman. Currently, an entirely new dream has taken hold. When I was windsurfing, I wanted to compete on an international level. I had to give that up. But now I have the chance to pursue the dream of going out into the world with this new item in my pocket. That's how it feels. Stepping out into the world with Edo Komon, Hirose has an idea of how to start the mission. With scarves. He has launched a scarf brand called Komon, meaning how are you in French. Based on traditional patterns, Hirose has added a layer of design and color to jive with contemporary clothes. Tradition is altered slightly to suit the current times. I felt there was a world of possibility once an element of fashion was added to the traditional designs. I'm always thinking about just how stylish I can dye these Edo Komon fabrics. With his scarves, Hirose hopes to reach an audience for which kimonos are not a part of daily life. I'm struck by his passion as a maker, his ability to actualize his dreams and then communicate it widely. They're very modern and would look great over everyday clothes or a dress, for example. When you twist it, you can show the patterns on both sides, which I think could add a fashionable touch to an outfit. I looked through them, thinking how cool it would be if I could wear one and pull it off. <laughs> My wish is to introduce Edo Komon to people who don't wear kimonos and have never heard of the craft. For those who do own kimonos, I make sure to show them the new Edo Komon colors and patterns. To further his mission, Hirose has taken his Edo Komon abroad. He showed at a global fashion textile exhibition in Paris called Premier Vision. There he met a teacher of dyeing at a national art university in Paris. She took a great interest in Hirose's work. I was mesmerized by his skills. I thought it would be a valuable lesson to my students if they could witness the accuracy and the skill that is needed at this level of craftsmanship. Hirose gave a lecture on Edo Komon to the students who then made original patterns for their dye projects. 
He says working with them helped him rediscover the value of Edo Como. When you're in the midst of something, no matter how great it is, you tend to forget its worth. They helped me realize that and rediscover the potential that Edo Komon holds. Hiroshi is technically a professional of dyeing, but for the first time he put on the designer hat to come up with a new Edo Komon pattern. Something that has never been seen before in the craft, the skull motif. During the Edo period, the skull symbolized regeneration and signified living in the moment, but it was never used in Edo Komon. I'd always wanted to create a modern design for our generation. I see many brands using the popular skull motif, but I wanted to come up with something that likely doesn't exist. Hirose quickly sprang into action. I'm excited to see how this new motif will be received not just in Japan, but around the world. It could help to elevate the craft of Edo Komon. Hirose has arrived in Suzuka Mie, where katagami is produced. He's here to meet with an expert of the craft. Hello. This is Yasuhide Rokutani, a master of Ise katagami. Rokutani is a 50-year veteran of the katagami world. He hand-carves his stencils one by one using a range of tools in various sizes. Hirose pulls out his design for Rokutani. I have not seen anything like it for Edo Komon. With that, Rokutani immediately points out the challenges. The designs are extremely small. They're so close together. I don't think I can carve them so tightly. In between the skulls? I would need more space in between. How much space would you need? I would need about this much. It appears Hirose's design is too dense. With Rokutani's advice, he makes his adjustments and receives the go-ahead. Six months later, the finished katagami finally arrives. Hirose's skull pattern realized. Because of its intricate nature and countless holes of varying degrees, this design took longer to carve than ordinary katagami. The dots are packed together, so the amount of glue I use and the force with which I hold the spatula can determine whether the glue becomes smeared. It's not about how the katagami will work for me, but how I can work with the katagami, how flexible I can be. Becoming one with this tool is most important. Because of the extreme detail, Hirose prepares with even more diligence than usual. Finally, it is time to dye his contemporary komon.
It was true with the designing, but dyeing this for the first time. It's a lot of fun. And the final product. Until now, I've used existing stencils to dye traditional Edo Komon. But to design one from scratch and have the katagami made and then dyeing it has been a whole new process. I couldn't have done it without the katagami creator and appreciate Rokutani-san so much. I'll be happy if this pattern is passed on to the generation after me. With this one-of-a-kind pattern, Hirose's new pursuit has commenced. I asked Hirose-san what he sees in his future. I'd like to expand on the possibility of Edo Komo, collaborating with global brands outside of Japan, in order to have as many people see and experience what we call Edo Iki, or style. So the Edo technique is going to be applied to different things. Yes. I think it's most essential to pass this on to the next generation. Hirose-san then introduced me to someone special. <laughs> What's your name? Kiichi. Kiichi, he's the fifth generation? That's right. So Kiichi is going to learn what it takes to be a classman. I hope so. He's always playing here in the studio. There will come a time when he starts to watch you work. When I started this work, I never imagined I would be taking it overseas. But I guess you can say I've spent these past several years creating a way to make that dream a reality. I thought that doing this work meant I wouldn't be out meeting people anymore. But times have changed in a great way, and we're able to communicate more with the outside world. I think the goals that arise now are suitable for our modern times. So I hope to always keep that door of possibility open. I look forward to seeing what it's passed on from the fourth to fifth generation. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, let's head to the runway for catwalk trends. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Bye-bye.